Record low interest rates and spectacular property price growth rates, in particular Sydney, Brisbane and even many regional areas, has spurred on the banking regulator APRA to tighten up the rules around mortgage lending to investors, resulting in banks increasing investment loan interest rates and increasing deposit requirements. So what's the outlook for property investor finance? Will conditions ease or will things just get tougher? Joining me now is independent mortgage broker, Brendan Hoare from First Step Financial Solutions. Thank you so much for joining me today, Brendan. No problem, Carl. So what's, what's going to happen? Is it, uh, you know, is, is it going to get tougher? What's yeah, happened? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, it's got tougher the last 12 months, especially. Um, I mean, a lot of the banks now, they've certainly tightened up. Yep. Uh, the loan to values have, have reduced to, you know, 90% for investors now. Pretty okay. Much. Yeah. Um, some lenders will even go to eighty percent. So I mean, that, obviously, that means you need a twenty percent deposit plus stamp duty, mm. which is a lot of money. Uh, they also have what's called an assessment rate. So that's basically the uh, the rate that's offered to the client plus a buffer. Yep. Um, so that can be you know seven eight percent, and that's increasing as well. So obviously, the, mm. the higher that goes, the less the client can borrow yeah. as well. So it means you need more deposits. So it's it's getting it's getting tougher. Okay. Do you think it's going to it's going to continue to be tough like this, or do you think I, things will I change? I think so for the immediate, yeah. Uh, yeah for the short term, it's, it's looking that way. I mean, they're definitely tightening up. Even even interest only loans, they've tightened up on a lot as well. Yeah. Um, but the, the the important thing is to, is to get the mortgage broker involved uh, quickly, and they can you know go through all the different uh, assessment rates that the banks have and then yep. the products and stuff like that, and find the best one suited to the client's needs. Ab- absolutely. And yep. before we get to talking about why use a yeah. mortgage broker, yep. um, just the point that you made about um, the assessment rate being a little bit higher. Yeah. I think it's actually a bit of a, a level, gives a level of comfort to the consumer if they get exactly. their loan approved exactly. because the assessment rate's a lot higher yeah. than the actual rate. And if you think about it, the bank is actually um, gearing up for price increases. Absolutely, yeah, they don't yeah, want yeah. to put the client in a position they can't handle, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's the whole point of the assessment rate, to make sure yep. that they can afford a future interest rate rises. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So I guess it's really important for, for both first home buyers and yes. investors to make sure that they get the best possible product and rate and and, and, yeah. and, and service that's going to suit them not just now but as conditions change in the future. Yep. So tell us a little bit about why uh, a client should go to a mortgage broker. Yeah, well the short answer is unbiased. So basically if a client goes to their, their own bank, um, they're presented with, with just their products. Yep. Um, so if they go to an experienced mortgage broker, they have up to 30 lenders, hundreds of different products and the mortgage broker will be able to find the most suitable one, you know, uh, dependent on their needs. Yeah. Yeah. It is very uh, biased, isn't it? If the, if the client exactly, goes yeah. to the bank, they're going to say, okay, these are the bank products. They and, won't, they uh, won't uh, provide any other products. Choose. That, you know, obviously, yeah. yeah. Okay, very good. Well, I think it's important that people engage a mortgage broker. And, yep. and that's why I got you in here. <laughs> um, okay, so um, with the tightening of these rules, and it's obviously going to make it tough all round, yep. who do you think is going to be affected the most? Well, first home buyers and investors are affected. I mean, first home buyers, because obviously they need more deposit. Um, you know, property prices are rising all the time. Yep. Um, so obviously, you know, they still need their 5% minimum deposit. Mm. Um, and sometimes they can take rental ledgers and stuff like that, but they still need a 5% plus stamp duty potentially. So, so that's a lot of money for first home buyers. For investors, uh, there's actually a positive here because, mm. you know, if, if they own a uh, property already, the, you know, property prices increasing would provide a bit of equity in that property and potentially yep. they could actually release some of that equity to, to purchase a second property or a third property. Mm. You're yep. right, there is some, um, there's, there's a bit of a challenge, yep. and I say a bit, there's a great challenge for the first home buyer Absolutely. with these um, rapid um, increases in value in properties all around. Yep. You know, um, I heard on the radio uh, the other day that um, some properties in, in certain areas are going up $1,000 a day in value. Yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, yeah. If you're a first home buyer, you know, coming up with 5% of a million dollars is no small feat, you know yeah, what I mean? It's absolutely. Plus the stamp duty and all that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly, on top but, as well. Yeah, but clients still can get into the Sydney market um, around the 650 range and, and get the first homeowner's grants and exemption of stamp duty. Uh, yep. They just need to find the, the right property. Yeah, exactly. Um, and but for investors, I think it's it's great because, um, you know, like you said, they've got properties that have increased in value yeah. and we're exactly. seeing more and more of them actually using yep. that lazy equity to, exactly, to buy yeah. other properties. There's an opportunity there for them, yeah, absolutely. So, Brendan, talking about how hard it is for first home buyers, right? Yeah. So coming up with, like I said, 5% of a million dollars is pretty difficult. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But there is a... Um, a policy throughout, not all banks, but some banks, yeah. where the client can actually prove genuine savings yep. by way of 
a rental ledger or something like that. Can you tell me yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah, exactly. So, so some lenders, as you said, not all lenders, only some lenders uh, have this policy where they can actually use your rental ledger. So once you've been renting for say six or 12 months, yep. they can actually take your rental ledger and look at that and see that you, you can meet an ongoing financial commitment. Yes. Uh, and therefore you don't have to come up with 5% genuine savings, meaning saved up in your own bank account for at least three months or longer. So, so that get, gets rid of the, the uh, genuine savings requirements. So it yep. basically means you can get the deposit from a gift or from a sale of an asset or yep. even a personal loan sometimes. Yeah, do you know, that's huge. That's yep. huge for people that are trying to get into the market who yep. can't save yep. while they're renting Absolutely. such a great amount. Very difficult. But by proving that they can make that financial commitment, like you've said, yep. it ticks that box called genuine savings with some of the banks, some lenders, all, the, exactly. all the banks. So that's why it's also important to have the mortgage broker on board because yep. he'll obviously know which, which banks have that policy and which yep. don't. Yeah. And these policies are different from bank to bank or lender absolutely, to lender, is absolutely. that right? Yeah. So, some look for six months yeah. uh, tenant ledger, some look for 12 months, some can take a, a letter from the agent yep. saying you've been renting, how much you've been renting, how long you've been renting for, um, and some can actually take your bank statements showing the rent payments okay. you know, coming out per week. I'm going to ask this question because I know a yep. lot of people may be thinking it at home. Yep. Does the bank with this genuine savings policy by way of rental payments add up all the weekly repayments that you're paying in rent yep. and does that need to come to 5% of the purchase price? Yeah, that's a common error that people, people, people think, yeah. no, no, it doesn't. I mean, basically what they do is they just, they just want to see that you're making that regular payment. It doesn't matter how much it's for. Yep. Uh, it, they don't add up the total amount of the rent. Okay, that's yeah. very, very yeah, good. Absolutely. So mum and dad can give you the money, Yep. okay, that, which is... Yep. You know, if you're lucky enough, mum and dad's got the money to give it to you, um, and you prove that you can meet the ongoing financial commitment by showing your rental payments, they don't need to add up to no. 5% of the purchase Absolutely price. Yep. And as long as you can meet the other banking requirements around income and all that sort of exactly. thing, yep. um, they'll get the loan. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so look, I want to talk to you about something which is um, on my list here, and it's a, it's a question that comes up a lot, and it's about valuations. Mm, yeah. Now, we're in a market right now where we're in a buoyant market, and yep. um, I think the valuers are a little bit nervous about that. Um, tell us a little bit about you yeah. know, some of your experiences with, yeah, well, with valuations. Yeah, valuations, I mean, it, it does actually depend on which valuer actually goes to, to look at the property a lot of the time, because some are more conservative than, than others. Yep. Um, usually with an established house, they tend to come back on the contract price, usually. Yeah. Um, the, the main discrepancies are when it's a new build, yep. um, so sometimes they might come back a bit less than the contract price, mm. and, and that might be because there's not enough comparable sales in the area. Yep. Um, so it might be a, you know, a greenfield site that they're building on, and there's mm. no similar properties to compare the prices to. So that's where yep. the discrepancies arise. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, um, um, we, we heard very recently there was a property, it was actually an established property the client was trying to buy. Yep. I think it was around 950,000. The valuation came in 100 grand less. Wow. It's a first home buyer, so they, yep. couldn't, they, they couldn't make the purchase because yeah, exactly. they didn't have the 100 grand plus the stamp duty and deposit and everything yeah. that they had. Sometimes investors might be able to you know, bridge that gap if there's enough equity in the property, but obviously yep. 100 grand is, 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 is a lot. Yeah. Absolutely, it's yeah. Very strange. So, Brendan, any final words of wisdom for anybody who's looking at getting a loan? Well, I suppose, uh, uh, you know, engage the, the mortgage broker pretty early, I'd suggest. Uh, get, have your pre-approval in place because that establishes your budget and, you know, gives you a bit of peace of mind when you're looking to put an offer on a property. Yep. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I, I just want to make a point. There is pre-approvals and there's pre-approvals, right? Exactly. You want to yeah, expand yeah, on that yeah, a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So some of the banks, I mean, they, they just issue a pre-approval uh, straight away. They don't actually assess your documents. So, so obviously we want to go to a bank that actually looks at your documents and, and makes the call, yes, this is pre-approved or not. Yeah, so it's important the client doesn't go and buy a property unless they've actually got a proper pre-approval. Pre exactly, where they've their actually circumstances. looked at their pay slips and their bank statements and everything. Yeah. Very good. Thanks yeah. for coming in, Brendan, from First Step Financial Solutions. No problem. Yeah.